The get pivot data function divides Excel users. You either love it or hate it, but there are good reasons for learning to love it. I did a video on using the get pivot data function for regular pivot tables a while ago, and hopefully you're embracing it now. However, if you're a power pivot user, then you may have found that the get pivot data function works a little differently. Let's take a look. Before we get started, let's make sure the get pivot data function is turned on so that Excel will automatically write the formula for us when we reference the pivot table. The selecting any cell in the pivot table activates the pivot table analyze tab on the ribbon. Over on the far left, we have options and at the bottom generate get pivot data. You can see mine is turned on and that means that when I reference any cell in the pivot table values area, the get pivot data function will automatically be inserted and Excel writes the formula for me. Now, if you're a fan of the get pivot data function, then you may notice that when you reference a power pivot pivot table, the function arguments look a little different to what you're used to. If I click inside the function, we get the tooltip showing me the arguments. Now I can tell we're referencing a power pivot pivot table because it always starts with measures. Whereas you won't see the word measures in a regular pivot table get pivot data formula. The syntax is data field. And in this case, it's a measure called sum of order amount. Next, we have a reference to the pivot table. This is just so that Excel knows which pivot table to look at. It can be any cell in the pivot table, but by default, it chooses the top left cell because this isn't at risk of disappearing if your pivot table changes shape on refresh or if you were to move the filters field, for example. Next, we have field one and item one, and they're enclosed in square brackets. The square brackets mean that an argument is optional, but that's not what I wanted to point out. What's quite different here is that one argument has a comma inside it. So if we look at the formula, we can see that the first part is the table and column, in this case orders and the order date and the automatically created month group. And then if we look at item, we get our orders table and the order date month and specifically the month of January. Notice how January is hard keyed and that's a problem we're going to solve in this tutorial. Then the next part is field two, which is the orders table province column. And the item is Alberta, the province of Alberta. Again, hard keyed. We're going to look at how we make those two fields, the month and province dynamic. And it's these hard keyed arguments that are the reason so many people dislike get pivot data. And it means you simply can't copy and paste the formula and expect it to dynamically pick up February, then March and April. You can see it's returning the same value in every cell. And if we look in the formula bar, it's because we're just copying those hard key values of January and Alberta. So let's delete those ones and look at how we make it dynamic. So what I'll do is I'll just list the months up here and let's copy that across. So we've got a list of months. And the other thing I want to do is make the province dynamic. So let's insert a data validation list here. And we want list and the source will just be the list there. So now we have a province. Let's change it to BC or British Columbia. And now we can modify the formula. So instead of Jan hard keyed, we want a cell reference here. So first I need to terminate the text up to that point. We still want the square brackets surrounding the reference. So we put in a double quote ampersand. Let's reference the cell containing the month. And we want to concatenate that to the closing square bracket. And that way the reference to the month name Jan is surrounded by square brackets either side. Let's repeat that for Alberta. So instead of Alberta, we're going to have double quote and we want to reference this cell here and I need to F4 to absolute that reference. Then and and another set of double quotes around the closing square bracket. And we press enter. So you can see it's now picking up the British Columbia value. And if I copy that across, let's make those columns slightly wider. You can see it's picking up all the values for BC. And if I change the province, it dynamically updates accordingly. So you can see, although it's a little bit of messing about, once you make those changes, it's completely dynamic. And I like to use get pivot data to build my reports sometimes when I'm really specific about the formatting I want. 
Pivot tables are a bit limited in the formatting that you can do on them and the layout of them. But when you use get pivot data, you've got the best of both worlds because now you can use slices with the formula because the slicer will filter the pivot table and that will in turn feed through to your formulas. Just keep in mind that get pivot data can only return values that are present in the pivot table. So if you use a slicer that filters the pivot table that removes, for example, some of the provinces, then your get pivot data formula may return an error if the value is now missing from the pivot table. I hope you found this video useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.